What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp plugin tutorial for you. So yesterday we talked about the plugin Sketchy FFD and uh, how you can use it to deform shapes. So now I'm going to get a little more in depth on what you can do with it, how it works, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So um, first thing we're going to do, um, make sure you have that extension uh, installed on your computer. I think I had to get it through the Sketchucation extension store. But first thing we're going to do is we're just going to draw a circle, probably a 24 sided circle. Um, remember, you can set that when you're first drawing your circle by typing in the number of faces that you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude a circle up a little bit using the push pull tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on hidden geometry. So what hidden geometry does is lets me work on each one of these faces individually. And the nice thing about doing it this way is I know if I rotate this in a circle, um, I know that I can make one object and then create 23 copies to create a complete circle. So anyway, we're just going to kind of go simple with this right now. Um, we're just going to do an offset on this face and then you can erase these other, whoops, can't quite do that yet. You can draw a box across that and then you can come in here, you still can't erase that, never mind. We'll just leave it the way it is for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this shape right here, maybe if I draw a box across the top, if I erase that, I'll just come across here and draw this face again so that I've got this shape right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it in a circle um, 23 times so that it goes all the way around the circle. But before I do that, I'm going to color it up um, because once you start coloring a lot of faces, it gets a little difficult to come back or once you start copying a lot of faces, it gets a little hard to come back and uh, recolor them because there's just so many of them. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and subdivide our box just like this. That'll um, that'll just give FFD more more faces to work with when we uh, start making our when we start deforming our shape and stuff like that. So anyway, go ahead and make a shape that looks like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create a copy using the rotate tool. Then you're going to type in times 23 and hit the enter key. That'll create 23 copies, plus this one is your 24th. That gives you 24 versions of this shape right here. And then you can come in here and you can erase this base piece. We don't need it anymore. So what we're gonna do is just drag a box across this face like this. We're gonna use the move tool to copy this up 10 times. So make sure when you do that, that these points all intersect just like this, and then just type in times 10 and hit the enter key. And that'll create your copies so that you've got kind of this taller shape just like this. So now if you remember the way FFD works, uh, what you have to do is you have to put all your geometry in a single group. So like for example, I can't have these in here as components. If I have groups within my groups or components within my groups, it doesn't work very well. But if you come in here, drag a box across this shape, make sure it's all individual faces, and then just right click and click make group. Once you do that, you can right click on here and you can come, the, the way you can tell if you've done this right is if you click on FFD down here and it gives you options for your different, uh, different grids, you know you've done it right. So that's what you're going to do next is you're going to right click on the shape, go down to FFD and we're going to select one of these options and FFD has a couple built in grids. It has a two by two and a three by three, but it also has this in by in. And what that means is when you click on it, you can set the grid yourself. So you can tell it, I want you to divide this object into a grid four points wide, four points deep and four points tall. And subdivide would come in here and it would divide your faces up. This would be especially useful if you had like a single cylinder or something like that that didn't have faces on the inside. But we're going to go ahead and leave it on false for right now and just click that OK button. And when you click that OK button, what it's going to do is it's going to take a second and then it's going to add all your control points in here. You can see how if I drag my mouse across one of these points, um, it'll select the group of control points. And what I found works best for me when editing these is going down into the outliner and there will be a group in here called FFD control points and just double clicking on that. Um, otherwise, you're stuck in here trying to make sure that you click on top of a single point. And if you're trying to click on a point it's inside your geometry over here, it gets really tricky. It's just easier to come over here in the outliner and double clicking on that FFD control points. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start working with our points. And if you remember the way this extension works, 
is you take these points and you move them around and it deforms your model. So like for example, if I was to move this sideways, it would deform my model sideways along with those points. You know, if I was to rotate this, it would rotate my model. Well, what we want to do is we want to scale these points. So we want to use this, the scale tool in uniform mode to scale everything inward like this. And remember, you can activate the scale tool by tapping the S key. So I guess, first of all, make sure you drag your mouse. Whoops. So first thing you want to do is you want to drag, drag your mouse across the points that you want to edit. So in this case, I'm selecting all the points on the bottom here. And then once I have those selected, I'm going to come in here and start moving them around. So make sure you've got the entire bottom row of points selected. And we're just going to use that scale tool to just scale everything inward, just like this. And you can toggle about center mode by holding the control key when you're dragging that point. And you can see what that does is that deforms my shape so that it goes inward just like this, which is exactly what we want it to do. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to drag our mouse across this top piece right here. We're going to we're going to extend that outward, doing the same thing using a scale tool. So you can see you can make it as wide as you want. I just want it to be kind of this funnel type shape. So anyway, once you've scaled that outward, that gives you kind of your general funnel shape. Um, now we're going to start playing around with the rotation on this thing. So what we're going to do is go in here and select all the points on the top part of your model right here. And in fact, let's go ahead and select the top three rows of points just like this. So drag your mouse across all these points. And then we're going to activate the rotate tool. And remember with the rotate tool, it doesn't really matter how high or how low this is. It just matters what point you set your origin to. So you can just use the very center right here. What we're going to do is we're going to set a base point and we're going to rotate this 45 degrees. So when you rotate this 45 degrees, if you look in here, you can see what that did is that rotated, that rotated the points from here to here, 45 degrees. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here to the top part and we're going to rotate that another 45 degrees. So go ahead and select that second row just like this and rotate that 45 degrees. And then we're just going to take this top part and we're going to rotate that 45 degrees as well. So you can see what that's done is that's come in here and that's created your spiraling shape along the outside of this. And then you can get a little more creative with this if you want, like if you wanted this to kind of move sideways, you could use the move tool to move these points over here, these points over here, if you wanted to do that to really make some kind of crazy shapes in here. So you could come in here and you can make this like spiraling funnel. You could also come in here if you wanted to, um, and maybe do this using five grid points instead of four and you could widen something out here and you could make it a base like it was an actual piece of furniture or whatever. So now what we're going to do, because we've got our general shape in here um, that kind of spirals like this and I'm actually going to undo that. I think just for the sake of what we're doing here, I think probably I'm just going to leave this the way that it is. If anything, you know what, I think this is good enough. So once, once I'm done with this, what you can do for right now is you can just hide your control points. So, and remember I have hidden geometry on, so they're still kind of showing up. So turn that back off. You can hide your control points just in case you need to come back in and use them later. But you can see what you've got is you've got this cool spiraling shape, but part of your problem in here is all of your faces um, are kind of subdivided and ugly and all that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna clean that up. And uh, in order to do that, what we're going to do is, first of all, I like to have all my materials in their own groups. So what I'm going to do, since I have two different material types in my model, is I'm going to click select. I'm going to right click on a material. I'm going to click select and I'm going to select all with same material. And you can see what that does is that selects all my faces in my model that have this glass material in them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to put it all in a group. And then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna do the same thing for this kind of gray material. I'm gonna select all the same material, I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna click Make Group. So 
And the reason we're doing that is we're going to come in here and we're going to select all the geometry. So come in here and double click in the group you created and then just hit like a control A or something like that. And we're going to smooth all that geometry using softened edges. And what that does is, so if you look right now, all of these faces have these lines running across here. Well, what SketchUp has is it has this softened edges piece. And what that'll do is that'll kind of smooth everything out so those lines aren't in there. So you can see when I kind of drag this across, as I drag it, the lines kind of disappear. Um, and you may need to have both boxes checked in here, the smooth normals and the softened coplanar. But once you kind of drag this across, drag it across far enough that there's no longer any lines visible in here. And you can see that now each one of these is in here as an individual face. So it's a lot smoother, it's a lot better looking. And now we're gonna do the same thing with this other group. So just come in here, do a control A, and you can see that selects everything that's got this kind of gray material in here. And then just drag this bar until all those extra lines in there, that are kind of ugly, go away. So just kind of drag it over here to like, 50 or 70 or whatever it takes for that to go away. But then if you come in here now, you can see what you got is you've got this nice smooth face with glass in it and all that. And um, I haven't really tried too much of this. You could probably come in here with like a joint push pull or something like that and probably extend those faces out if you wanted to mess with that and create this more in 3D. That's probably gonna take a second now that I did that uh, just cause it's gonna generate a lot of geometry. But you could do that to create more of a 3D feel in here. Um, you could also do that by just creating that in 3D before you use FFD in here. But that gets a little messy with the geometry and stuff like that. So there's a few different things you can come in here and you can do um, just, just to kind of edit this and kind of make it the way that it the way that you want it to look. So now once you've done that, you can kind of zoom out. And you know, one, one of the things about doing this this way is you may get some kind of messed up geometry down here at the bottom. So you may have to go in there and clean that up or try something a little different. Uh, it doesn't always work perfectly in here. But um, generally speaking, that gives you this cool kind of spiraling shape just like this. So I'm gonna go back and undo that because I kind of like this just the way that it is. But this is ready now for you to go in there and uh, put it in a rendering software or whatever you want to do. So anyway, leave a comment below. Let me know um, Let me know what you're using this for, uh, what ideas this gives you, what you'd like to do with this, stuff like that. I really love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. So if you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button. I'm coming out with new SketchUp content every week. Uh, every Friday is SketchUp plugin tutorials. If you really like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. In any case, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.